In this video, we are going to run a regression to figure out if we've got a good uh, screening model to see if our screening variables are actually priced into the market. So we're going to run a regression. Now, when you run a regression, you click the, the button that says data up here at the top. And over here, you see have a button that says data analysis. If you don't have the button that says data analysis, then you can come over here and type on file. And then at the bottom, it says options. Then click on add-ins, and it may take it a while, sometimes it's real slow, but you click on add-ins, and it brings up this screen that says Excel add-ins, you say go, and then here's all the add-in choices you have. You, the, the analysis tool pack is the most important one for what we're doing, but you might click on all of them if you want to. And so that will, that will bring up this data analysis button. And so what we can do is we click on data analysis, and what we're interested in is regression. So I'm going to say OK. And what I want to do is my input range, that's what I'm trying to forecast. So in this case, I'm trying to forecast the EV, David Da. So I highlight that. And I'm going to try to forecast it using these three columns. So I just highlight these three columns and say OK. And then I want to put my output, I'm going to put it here in H1. And then I say OK. And now I've got my regression analysis my R squareds I'm gonna hit go to home key and make those percents my R squared tells me um, how much predicted value does do my inputs have in predicting my output so the adjusted R squared is actually the most important one here because it's going to tell you uh, that predicted value um, if you, especially if, if you have many many uh, independent variables. Here we have three independent variables. Our three independent variables are sales growth, gross margin, and debt, debit da. Those independent variables are going to try to forecast my dependent variable. You can see my R squared is only 30%. It's not a really strong relationship, but at least it's positive. The next thing we're going to look at is my F statistic. Now you have to, in your finance, in your statistics class, they'll explain this, but the F statistic. Um, you want to make sure that your F statistic is, ab is above 1 at, at worst case. Um, that means you have good explained variance more than you have unexplained variance. So that's, that's important. We want to look at the T statistic as well. Now on the T statistic, what you want with the T statistic is you want to value an absolute value that's greater than 2. You can see that we have that in some places and not in others, so we don't have a real strong relationship here. Our intercept and our second variable meet that criteria, but they don't all. And then on the p-value, I'll click and make that a comma format as well. Here we want this to be less than 5%. So again, you can see that two of my variables do, but two of mine don't. So I have some strong and some weak variables, but I'm going to go, go, go ahead with it. You can, you can work to try to make these stronger. So my intercept is 6.39. Again, I'll hit the comma. My x variable 1 is a positive slope of 0 0.01. My, remember, my x variable 1 is sales growth. So I'm going to type the word sales growth there so I know what that is. My second variable is gross margin. That's the one the model really likes, has good statistics. And then the last one is that dot. So if you look at our slopes, we have a positive slope on sales growth. That's good. Firms with good sales growth should be more expensive, should be trading for higher values. Gross margin has a positive slope. That's good. Firms that have good gross margins should be more expensive. And then debt to EBITDA, that's a negative slope. That's good. That means firms with more debt should be cheaper. We don't, that's a, you know, it's bad to have more debt. And so we have our intercept and our, our slopes, so we can now forecast our EV the EBITDA. So what I'm going to do is going to come over to column F where my, my, in the, my dependent variable is. I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert a column and I'm going to put my forecast EV to EBITDA. And what is my forecast? Well the forecast of that is I do equal to intercept. If you hit your function 4 key so you lock that in. You want dollar signs there. And then do plus my slope for sales growth. Lock that in hit the times button times my sales growth plus my slope for gross margin hit that function 4 key times my growth margin 
you don't hit the function key on the actual gross margin for the first company. See, we're just selecting it for the first company. And then my last one plus the slope of my debt to equity, hit the F4 key times my debt to equity, and hit enter. And you can see that we're forecasting for this first company, we're forecasting an EV EBITDA of 7.62, and it's actually trading at 6.59. So we think it should be trading at a higher level than it actually is. So this stock to us is cheap. We can buy it at a multiple of 6.59 when we think it's worth a multiple of 7.62. So that's good. I'm going to copy this down. You can see the second stock, BWA, it's trading at a multiple 11. We think it's only worth a multiple of 9.5. So we think this stock is expensive. Same thing here. This stock looks expensive. We can come down and look for, here's a really cheap stock, JCI. We think it's worth, I'm sorry, this is a very expensive stock. We think it's worth 8 and it's actually trading for 14. Um, let's see if we can find a cheap stock. Here's one, Dorm. We think it's worth 13. It's actually trading at 11. So what we can do is if you highlight this entire section, we can say insert, we can click on the, the XY graph and you click on that, you get an XY graph. So we just click on that and then what we can do is we can format the axis. So click on the X axis and say format and we want our minimum. You can see here there's nothing below six so we're going to make our minimum six. And then we'll click on the Y axis in format axis, you can see that the minimum here is 4 and the max is about 15. So we're going to make this from 4 to 15. And because that's an even number going to an odd number, we'll make our, our units 1. And so you can see here, we have a graph. You can see there's a relationship. So our forecast versus the actual, you can see there's a relationship. And then I'm going to just click on one of the dots, any of the dots, so you highlight the dots, and then if you right click on that, you can say add a trend line. We'll add a trend line. Stocks that are above this trend line are expensive. Stocks that are below this trend line are inexpensive. So let's find one here, 14 versus 8. That's that one uh, we were just looking at. So 14 versus A. The market is pricing it here. We think it's worth eight, they think it's worth 14, so that's an expensive stock. And what we could do is we could highlight that stock, so 14 and eight, that stock is JCI controls, so if we wanted to, we could right click, right -click and add a data label for just that one stock, and then you could go in and, and edit that data label and type in the ticker for the stock, DORM. And so then you can see this stock is extremely expensive. Here's a really cheap stock. It's trading in the market for just above five. We think it should be worth almost not over nine and a half. Here's that stock right here. It's trading for five in the market. We think it's worth nine um, sixty-eight. That stock is STRT. So let's click on that. Add a data data label. Edit the data label, and we'll put. STRT. So now we've got a good graph that shows we could label several of these. We might find a stock that we actually own, like we own BWA. It's trading for 11. We think it's worth 9. So trading for 11. And we think it's worth 9. There it is right there, 1104. So I could click on that one. Add a data label. A, this is stock that we own. And we can color code these however we want to do it. But here we have a pretty good model. Um, and we can label any stocks we think are interesting. So we might recommend to our boss that, wow, that's a really expensive stock. We might think about sorting that stock. Here's a stock we own. It's a little expensive, so we might sell it and replace it with STRT. Now, obviously, we'll do a lot more analysis than that. But um, just on the surface, just with our initial model, uh, we can say that our model has identified a stock that we own that needs to be sold, a stock that we don't own that we might sort because it's very expensive, and a stock that we don't own that we might buy. I'll show you how to clean this up a little bit more in the next video.